There's a very common misconception that horses never existed in pre-Columbian America. And this has caused people to rightfully question the mention of horses within the Book of Mormon. A few weeks ago, I was in western Wyoming, and I found this and several other fish fossils. But the interesting thing about the quarry I was in was not the fossils I found, but the fossils that somebody else found. When this was discovered in 2015 in the very same quarry I was working in, this was the most complete three-toed horse skeleton that had been found up to that time. Three-toed horses are a common ancestor of all horse species alive today. Now, three-toed horses were very small, but closer to where I live was discovered the Hagerman horse, which is more closely related with modern horses and nearer in size to a large modern donkey. The fact is that at least until the end of the Pleistocene or the Ice Age, there were numerous species of horses that lived on the American continent. Among these were the giant horse, the Yukon horse, the stilt-legged horse, and many others. The real question isn't whether or not horses existed in America, but when and if they went extinct, and whether or not horses survived into the times the Book of Mormon claims. Chronologically, the last mentions of horses within the Book of Mormon are made in 3rd Nephi, which places us solidly at the turn of the era. Previously, I mentioned that we know horses lived in the Americas at least until the end of the Pleistocene, but there actually is quite a bit of evidence suggesting that they did survive longer than that. This is an American curly, and this curly-haired trait is not found in any European species. There was a small population of horses with this same curly-haired trait that was found in Russia, but there is no evidence that these were ever introduced. This strongly suggests that this trait is a holdover from the Ice Age, which never went extinct in the Americas. There is an ongoing shift in the archaeological community, and more scholars are beginning to accept that horses may have survived in the Americas beyond 10,000 BC. A very recent study conducted in Mexico and published in the Texas Journal of Science has actually made some groundbreaking discoveries in this area. This study found remains of Equus mexicana and Equus conversitans well into the Holocene or beyond the Ice Age. You can see in this graph here that remains of Equus mexicanus were found in a layer of strata immediately before the introduction of Equus cabayas, which is our modern horse. In this graph, you can see that a piece of charcoal associated with the remains of a Mexican horse, Equus mexicanus, was dated to 930 years before present, plus or minus 30 years. While we are still waiting for more collaborative research to back up these findings, the idea that horses could not have existed in a Book of Mormon setting is becoming more and more outdated. In the past, Book of Mormon researchers have sometimes felt the need to explain the horses mentioned in the Book of Mormon in other ways, some suggesting loan shifts. John Sorensen in 1985 suggested tapirs, which the Spanish referred to as a forest horse. However, as we learn more about the ancient world, it becomes more and more clear that the Book of Mormon means what it says, and it is very likely that the horses mentioned within the Book of Mormon are exactly what they claim to be, and that they were indeed horses. There is a quote that I absolutely love. Do not let what you don't know get in the way of what you do. Do not allow unanswered questions to hinder you from further developing your faith in Jesus Christ. Do not disregard something that promises to bring you closer to your Savior simply because there are unanswered questions surrounding it. The Book of Mormon is a wonderful book. It is a spiritual book. It is true history. But its true value lies in its witness of Jesus Christ. You must ask God if it is true.